Hey, this is Larry with Man Cave Mayhem. It's a cold day in Southern California, but we're not letting that get to us at all. We're gonna blow the dust off the Suzuki Bergman 650, and we're gonna jump on the freeway and see what she'll do. I know there's a lot of people concerned about RPMs on the bike, what it'll do on the freeway. Well, we're, we're gonna eliminate that mystery and we're gonna show you exactly what that bike will do on the freeway. So let's get started. If you haven't yet, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Check us out at Instagram at mancave underscore mayhem. Now let's get on with the video. All right, well, I've got this scientific setup all ready to go and we are going to hit the road and kind of see what the RPMs do at certain speeds. I've got the GPS set up. Well, I almost have it set up. It may not show up real well on the camera the way I have it set up, but I'm hoping we can get some footage of that. If not, I've also got my helmet cam here that will give us an idea. But on an average, uh, from experience, there's about a five mile per hour speedometer error on this, on this scooter. Look at that, electric mirrors, you gotta love that. And this is a far cry from riding a motorcycle as far as effort is concerned because it's a scooter. But it's a 650cc scooter, which really makes a big difference when you're riding on the highway. So I know a lot of people have asked me, well, what's the RPM range on this thing? How does it do on the highway? I'm going 44 miles an hour and we're tacking about 4,500 RPM. The red line is around eight and a half, so it's got a pretty good it's got a significant red line to it and uh, you know like I said the speedometer error there's about a, a five mile per hour error so it'll read 56 we're probably really doing about 51 or 50 uh, and that's kind of how that sits but uh, yeah so I mean this bike is amazing it's got ABS on it it's got uh, you know all the creature comforts uh, as I said you know if you've seen some of my other videos the wife and I actually took this these bikes her her 400 cc scooter and uh, this 650 we went all the way to Chicago and back uh, via route 66 in the i-40 so it was uh, it was definitely uh, comfortable and uh, we did some long time uh, long rides in the saddle too so it wasn't just, you know, little 150 mile days. We were doing a few 500 mile days in the saddle. So it's, they're definitely capable of doing, uh, doing that. So if you're looking to buy one of these used, just keep an eye on, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, see if you can come across maintenance records. The belts on these are very expensive to replace if they have to be replaced, unless you're very handy. Uh, you're gonna have some issues replacing the belt on this. Uh, I know I don't want to. I've got 15,000 miles on this bike. Uh, when I bought it, I had 1,100 miles on it. So I put most of the miles on this bike. Uh, and it is a tw it's a 2012 Suzuki Bergman 650. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take this bike and we're gonna jump on the freeway and we're gonna see how this thing cruises. So we're going to sneak up here and try not to get ran over by somebody. This bike gets around anywhere from 50 to 55 miles per gallon. It's a four gallon gas tank, so it, it has a decent range. You really can't go wrong with the bike. They're very comfortable to ride. It's like riding a couch on top of a sewing machine. They run two counterbalance shafts on this bike, so it's a really a smooth, a linear uh, feel to it. A lot of people say, well, that's not a motorcycle. Well, you know, I've ridden plenty of motorcycles, but there's just something different about this thing. It's fun uh, and uh, very, uh, very enjoyable to ride. You don't have to think about shifting, which is kind of nice sometimes. It's a nice break. Uh, as far as uh, suspension, if you're jumping on this after riding a, an adventure bike, you'll be disappointed as far as suspension. The suspension's a little rough. Uh, uh, the front end's got about four inches of travel and the rear end's got about three and a half, I think. So it, the travel's not great on it. It works. Definitely feel the bumps. If you're, you're going over some hard bumps, you will feel them on this bike. Pretty flicky. Um, you, can, you can actually uh, 
change lanes really quick. I've been in the ABS on this and it works. It, it works uh, really well. I had a guy pull out in front of me and I want to say Oklahoma or something and uh, I had to hit the brakes and fortunately for me the ABS worked saved my bacon uh, and I was very happy that my wife wasn't riding in front of me because if she would have been in front of me during that time then it might have been a different outcome but uh, yeah so we're gonna hop on the freeway here and we're gonna bring this thing up to speed and uh, and we got idiots that just cut in front you know uh, they don't really know what the hell they're doing so we're gonna hop on this freeway and go north and we'll see how this bike handles how it responds in fact we're gonna get up here we're gonna ride up and split some traffic here all right so we're jumping on the freeway now i'm telling you this feels a lot different than riding an adventure bike with that small front tire got a 15 inch front tire on it and uh so it's a little different it's a different experience I was hoping there wouldn't be a ton of traffic today, but it looks like there is. Not really going as fast as I'd like to. Anyhow, you can see we're talking about uh, four grand at 62 miles an hour, four and a half at 65, something like that. So this, this bike really cruises nice. Uh, you really don't have to worry about keeping up with traffic at all. Uh, I, I'm very confident. Uh, as far as the performance of this bike on long trips and everything it does real well yeah. so I'm showing that I'm going 74 and we're about 45 grand right now so that gives you an idea what this bike is capable of and with that CVT transmission it uh, it actually really uh, it cuts the RPMs down pretty quickly uh, when you let off the gas so it'll drop that see I'm cruising at 67 and I'm just under four grand so We'll take five miles an hour off that and we're probably at 62 at probably 3900 RPM. So really not bad. Not bad at all. A lot better. All right, we'll go over the specs real quick on this bike. Now, my particular bike is a 2012 Suzuki Bergman 650. Uh, it's a four stroke twin cylinder, double overhead cam, four valves per cylinder, 638 cc, 38.9 cubic inches. The Boren stroke is 75.5 by 71.3 millimeters. Compression ratio is 11.2 to 1. It's liquid cooled. It's a wet, wet sump lubrication, electronic fuel injection. Um, the ignition's digital electronic, obviously electric start. Maximum power on that is uh, 40 kW or 55 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. Maximum torque is a whopping 62 newton meters. Uh, 45.7 foot pounds at 5,000 RPM. It's a electronically controlled CBT automatic and manual shift transmission. Final drive, it says, is a V belt, which actually um, that V belt goes to a final gear drive. So that kind of uh, it's a little different than what you would expect. Frame's made of tubular steel. It's got a telescopic front fork with a 41 millimeter inner tubes and coil springs. And it's oil damp and uh, rear suspension swing arm style, twin preloaded adjustable shock absorbers, and separate aluminum swing arm with quill spring oil damp. And uh, front wheel travel is 4.3 inches or 110 millimeters. Rear wheel travel is 100 millimeters or 3.9 inches. So basically about four inches of travel all the way around on that bad boy. We also got two 260 millimeter front disc brakes, two piston calipers, and they are ABS along with the rear brake. And it's a single 250 millimeter disc with the two piston caliper ABS. Front tire's a 12070R15. The rear tire's a 16060R14. Uh, the overall length of the bike is 89.2 inches. The width is 31.9. So anyhow, the wheelbase is 62.4 inches. Seat height is 29.7 inches. Ground clearance is 4.9 inches. Dry weight on this beast. Now this is the dry weight, 525 pounds. She's a heavy monster. Wet weight is 611 pounds. Uh, fuel capacity is 4 U.S. gallons or 15 liters. Top speed is 110 miles per hour or 177 kilometers an hour. And the quarter mile acceleration is a whopping 16 seconds. So I just wanted to go over that real quick with you. Let's get back to the video. 
as I said this GPS setup is kind of hinky so I don't know if it's gonna work or not if it doesn't you'll just have to take my word for it there's a there's about a five mile per hour speedometer error on this bike so right now I'm showing 80 miles an hour and it, and uh, we're about five grand so not bad not bad on a bike like this and if you are thinking about getting one of these bikes, like I said, just check the maintenance records. Make sure people have kept the maintenance up on it. That's the main thing. Uh, you know, I know these. I, I know these bikes will do some mileage. They say the belt's a lifetime belt, and I was I was told that the belt was improved from 2012 on. So whether that means it's fixed as far as having issues, but you know, a lot of times I see some of these older ones. You can pick them up fairly reasonable. So. Uh, I wouldn't hesitate to get an older one if uh, if the maintenance has been kept up on them. You know, there's a filter on this belt that needs to be checked every so often, uh, and if it gets dirty, the belt can overheat. But overall, that's usually not an issue unless you're off-roading the thing. When I cleaned mine at 14,000, it had minor dirt. Nothing bad. Nothing. Nothing bad at all. So, all right, we got a little stretch up black ribbon that we can take and see how she'll do on this stretch out here we just got to get past this truck all right here we go we're gonna open this thing up see what she'll do This will give you an idea. There's 90. So that gives you an idea kind of where we're at. So all day long, this thing will cruise. I'm telling you, she gets up and goes. Just because of the CBT, it just really It'll cruise along. A lot of people call these baby gold wings just because they're so freaking comfortable and easy to run. No doubt about it. So there's 86, 87. Again, you gotta comment you gotta account for speedometer error, but it has no problem getting to this speed. Just so you guys can see how she does. But, and then the minute you let off that throttle a little bit, those RPMs go right down. They dip right down. That's how a CVT works, you know? If you don't have a load on it, it'll it'll back that RPMs down and it makes it more fuel efficient. It's easier on the motor, a lot of stuff. So anyhow, that'll give you some kind of idea on how this bike runs. But it's a cold day out here today. We're, we're dipping below the 50s today. Not a fun time to be riding, actually. So we're gonna flip this bike around and get back home. But I wanted you guys to see what this bike will do on the highway because I've had quite a few questions about that and I wanted to try to answer them for you. Acceleration's pretty good on this thing too. It does really well. I think we're gonna bang this thing around here up at the uh, railroad crossing here. Get back to civilization. Hearing banjos playing out here. So, yeah. Here we go again. Do another run. There's 80. There's 90. There we go. Slow it down now. Don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, it gives you an idea what this bike will do. So we'll check the GPS when we get back and we'll be able to tell actually what the top speed was on this during this run. And it'll give us an idea, kind of where this bike sits as far as something that you know something that you guys would want to buy uh, if, it, if it's something that you guys are looking for so I have uh, you can see this car in front of me this bike uh, has an aftermarket light system that when you 
put the brights on during the day you can see them pulling over you put the brights on during the day uh, the lights will flash well and that's legal to have on a motorcycle to get people's attention but a lot of people think that they're emergency flashers or they think you're a cop and uh, so I find it kind of amusing because everybody will flash their lights at you they'll like that like that vehicle did they'll they'll put their lights on and pull over and uh, the reality of it is is uh, those lights are set up to flash for safety to get their attention so it definitely gets their attention but sometimes in the wrong way because people don't understand uh, the purpose of the lights so uh, I get a lot of interaction with those lights which is kind of funny all right just so you guys can see maximum speed was 80 89 miles per hour and uh, so that gives you an idea uh, basically of some of the speedometer I'm not sure that it picked up all of the readings on the GPS but I did want you guys to see that at least so not too bad for a, a scooter right a maxi scooter so it's something to consider all right that's gonna about wrap it up folks for this video I hope this helps you out in making a decision if you're deciding to purchase a Suzuki Bergman 650 maybe this will kind of give you a little better idea of how they work if you haven't yet, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Check us out at Instagram at mancave underscore mayhem. And just remember folks, I'm just a man in a cave causing mayhem. Thanks again for watching.